We're here at Camp Perry, Ohio, with Doug Karlstrom of Rock Island to talk about the M14 EBR. Doug, tell us a little bit about this rifle. Uh, actually, what you see in front of you, though, right now, is actually what we call our national match version of the EBR. Okay. Back in about 2006, when we actually went in to uh, develop what we call the M14 EBR in the combat version, it was a result of things we saw when we were in Iraq in 2004 and 2006 in Afghanistan. And we were issuing on a... a uh, uh, an operational need statement to warfighters, uh, they had 30 caliber capability, but was actually going to the field was a rack grade M14 with a wooden or nylon stock, uh, one magazine and a sling. It soon become pretty evident that soldiers realized they had a capability in 30 caliber and started scoping them up and mom and dad were sending them different configurations and there got to be such a proliferation that we couldn't support all the configurations and there was just a way to, to give them a better mousetrap. So in 2006 I actually went out to industry and took a platform that was really uh, developed uh, between uh, Crane, a guy by the name of Dave Armstrong at Crane, Indiana, I mean Crane, uh, he, uh, uh, Naval Warfare Center, and a guy by the name of John Klein from Sage International. That's really where this Sage platform really evolved. So I went and kind of begged from industry and got a few things because uh, we didn't have the right color of mental, the money to develop another system. So we kind of piece parted together this Sage stock. We used a Leupold Mark IV uh, uh, variable powered optic, 3.5 to 10 with a mill dot reticle. And then we took barreled actions right out of Aniston Army Depot that the Army has, I won't get into numbers, but we have a lot of them that belong to the Large taxpayers. Numbers. Got it. Rack grade barrel standard uh, weight barrels, we, we found out early on that when we actually put this uh, platform and this barrel action together with the right optics that they shot super accurate and uh, we started putting them out in the field. We got funded from the Army Resourcing Board to build 5,000 of them and uh, today we have a little over 5,600. We'll go out to 6,200 and that will be the, the inventory. But the warfighters are using them every day and uh, they're, uh, they're shooting some bad people with them. Excellent. Now you said the, one of the main um, pushes to get this platform out there was the 30 caliber 7.62 NATO cartridge. Now we have uh, rifles like the M24, the Marine Corps, of course, the M40, and then the newer M110. What are some of the uh, advantages that this platform is offering over those other platforms? Well, the biggest advantage, I, I guess the word advantage isn't the right term. Uh, I will say this, it comes out to where it will hold its own with uh, the 110, it'll hold its own with uh, uh, a lot of the platforms out there. It, it, it's certainly not going to stay with a bolt rifle, I mean the M24 and the M40. Those guns, uh, they were designed to be a thousand yard gun, although these will shoot at a thousand, but the, the real uh, thrust behind this was building this for our squad designated marksmen where you have a density of, of weapon systems that meet the the uh, schoolhouse sniper but those never reach the SDM guy there's not enough numbers out there to do that and so the sniper school and the folks that really are school trained to handle these types of weapons and understand the wind understand mirage and those things that that's what that's directed to what we directed this more to putting this weapon system out to an SDM guy that we knew were these guys are pretty good shots and given them this capability uh, it enhanced their capability to take out targets at extended ranges and they're doing just that. Excellent. Now as far as uh, what are some of the cost differences between this versus the M24 and the M110? You got to realize this gun is M14 has always been owned by the taxpayer, and we have a lot uh, of these sitting in Aniston Army Depot in Code A. So they're already bought and paid for. The taxpayers owned them for many, many years. It's always been a great weapon system. We just put it in a lot better platform and enhanced the accuracy of the gun right out of the box. It meets the need today, uh, so it's unfair to really compare cost because industry is building something up uh, that that they have to pay for from scratch. But there is a substantial amount of difference. I mean, you're talking probably, uh, I'm not going to name names, uh, but one system to this one, you're probably talking uh, per gun in the neighborhood of about nine to $10,000 in difference in price because we own the gun. Okay, so that's a substantial savings 
to have a semi-automatic 308 capability more than sufficient accuracy in the hands of a well-trained rifle shooter could reach out to a thousand yards and much greater numbers of availability so now we have something not only issued to uh, say school trained snipers but at the squad level right. to a trained designated marksman right another rifleman maneuvering within the element and Correct. being able to have this capability on the ground absolutely excellent now for someone that's familiar with nm14 there, once it's built there's really not a lot of difference is there oh no not at all as a matter of fact the only five components that are never used back in the gun are the old barrel band behind the cylinder the op rod guide block and the pin the stock itself is no longer used um, those five components and the heat shield on top the the handguard the nylon handguard those are the five components that's the beauty of this thing this whole barrel action goes right back into this platform and it's used from front to back and uh, Sergeant First Class Chris Gervasio of the USAR uh, shooting team is going to be competing with this rifle here at Camp Perry during the NRA Long Range Championship. Is that correct? He's going to be shooting thousand yard any rifle with it right there. We built actually a national match configuration of this. This is one of those rifles. This actually is a little more tricked up though than what we build for the Warfighter. This thing has a lot of national match components uh, front to back as far from metallic sights to straight heavy barrels to uh, recoil spring guides, uh, all of the national match type stuff and trigger jobs that we do not do for a warfighter, those are rack triggers. It, it ends up people that don't understand triggers like snipers do uh, and, and real true trigger squeeze, you can afford them to have a trigger they need, but in the hands of a, a warfighter in a school train like that, um, that's more of a liability because they're going to be sending something down range when they're not really ready for it. So, Other than that, this thing is... Uh, uh, pretty much national mat platform we change this to a magpole type configuration stock with a totally different cheek piece positive settings for uh, the length of pull and the cheek piece as far as get climbing in behind optics or metallics uh, where the combat weapon uh, this is a positive lock where you don't have any relative movement front to back where the combat stock actually has a, a thumb release where you can slide it and it does have some give where you have uh, in and out minimal movement, but that has to be there because the tolerance stack up, you get into the, the silica sand and the grit and the crud. If you have that tolerance too tight where it can't move back and forth, then it won't lock up and now you've got a, a platform that's useless to them because you can't set the stock. So some of those things need to be there in the field where this thing is for punching holes and paper targets. So very similar to the, um, w when we had the M14 as the issue rifle, there was the national match version and the issue version, kind of the same thing here. Mm -hmm. Correct. Excellent. Well, appreciate your time. You Thank bet. you for talking to us. You betcha. Take care. All right.